Hey everyone, Pete Calandra here. On today's video, we'll be taking a look at Spitfire Audio's Appassionata Strings. This library is a medium-sized string orchestra, and its focus is on passionate, sustained, and legato articulations. What I thought I would do today would be to focus in on using this library in context, as I would use it as a composer. And to that end, I'm just going to focus in on the sustained articulation and the legato articulations. I've got several pieces, some of them taken from a couple of film cues of mine that I've reworked for this presentation. If you'd like a really detailed walkthrough of this library, please check out Paul Thompson's excellent video on the Spitfire YouTube channel. If you like this video, give a thumbs up for more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions down below. Thank you so much for watching, and let's get right into it. We've got three examples today. The first one has sustained strings going into a section with a legato and then back to sustained. What I want to show with this first example is that you can do some ethereal writing with this and just using the sustained strings. And then also that the sustained strings are very good for playing divisi. And then that will contrast with the middle section, which is down here, which has all the legato patches. Let's take a listen to this. All right, so what I like about this library right off the bat is that it's very full sounding. But at the same time, it's full sounding, but when you get into the Divisi sections, like right over here, you can still hear all of the different lines. It's still very articulate. So 
really, really overall, my first impression of the sounds on this library was good. Let's take a little bit more of a deep dive into what we've got going on. And we'll start off with just the first violin. And we'll solo that out. So it's just a single note, right? You're hearing that. But there is some work being done with the mod wheel. And this was before the days where I had a controller. I actually drew all this stuff in. And there's also speeding up and slowing down of the tempo here. And watch as it comes around. Listen to how the intensity changes. Really nice. Let's add our second violin into that, which is a second note. You can see that they blend in really well. They match intensity. It really is a very nice sound. And we will add our third note, which will be the viola. And you can see that the viola is doing a line here. And it's going below, in between, and above the violin notes. We'll take it right from here. So I like that. Now, if we take a look at our tempo map here, you can see how I've just speeding it up, slowing it down, just drawing in some nice animation in the tempo. So let's take a look at the mic signals. This is violin two. I've set all of these up the same way. Nothing from the first page. We go to the second page and I've got a close ribbon, which is set right next to the close mics and gives us some nice warmth, some ambient microphones, which are in the back of the room, and some outriggers, which are omnidirectional microphones at the same level as the tree mics, but just a little bit further out, which give you more of a stereo sound. And then there's no reverb from the built-in convolution reverb they've got in this particular plugin. So it's a very dry sound. Now let's look at when the celli comes in. So the celli comes in over here and we'll pick it up from right about there. So this kind of writing, this kind of slow unfolding, it's typical of what Aaron Copeland might do. And that's sort of the language that this film score used, right? And I love writing in that style. Now, in this next bit right here, we're going to hear the Divisi. Let's start off with just the violins. And we'll solo those. really sounds nice. Over here, this long note right here, when I played it in originally, it was two notes all the time. And then what I did was I took all the pitches that were the same and I just consolidated them. And when you're using sustained strings, the less attacks you can get, the smoother it'll sound. And that sort of masks So right here and right here, instead of there being two attacks, there's only one attack and there's a long sustained note. And the same right here. So that's just a little programming tip. And now let's add our second violin to that. And you can see we're doubling some notes and then adding a third pitch.
really full. You can hear all the lines. It's really, really well done. And now we'll add our cello. So if we look here, we can see that there's two notes being played in violin one, one note being played in violin two, two notes in the violas, and two notes in the cellos. So some of the notes are doubled, so you can't see them here. They're being masked. and But that is two, four, five, seven voice divisi right there, and it sounds beautiful. Even when you get to some of these lower pitched notes over here, which I'll play in a second, but let's add the bass in. And the bass only comes in in the last few notes here, just to punctuate this cadence that we're coming up to right at measure 125. So let's take a listen. Yeah, I like the way it sounds. So let's take a listen to the entire legato bit and then we'll break it down. very thick. It's really sounding thick. That's the one thing I'll say about these strings. So let's um, solo just violin one. Before we do that, this is a little bit different in that I've got some of the room or some of the St. Luke's convolution reverb in there. Great, now let's add in violin two. So you can hear a timbral difference between violin one and violin two, which helps the lines speak out, right? Violin two sounds a little bit darker than violin one. And then let's add our viola. What I like about it too is that it really breathes. And 
you know, you can hear all the different lines. It's really, really well done. And and there's not a lot of portamento. I've got examples of that later on, but we'll just keep on with what's going on now. And you notice as I keep adding parts in, everything sounds good, no matter how you break it down. And that's a good way to write parts, you know, where the soprano and the alto sound good, the soprano and the tenor sound good, the alto and the tenor sound good, the alto and the bass sound good, the soprano and the, all, all the different combinations all sound good together. And when you add them in one by one, they, every part should sound good as you're adding them in. Now we're add the bass in. All right, so that's this first example. Let's move forward to the next example I've got, which is this here. And let's open this up and let's do some notation this time. So this is one of the main themes from this film. And in keeping with the Copland-esque sound, what I've got here in some of the melodic contours of this are triads. What do I mean by that? Well, G, E and C gives us a C major triad in second inversion. That's just a unfolding of it that way. And then D, G, and B, right? A G triad from the second inversion. And then the way this is structured is that the violin one and violin two have sort of like a little contrary motion counterpoint there for the first few bars. And then at the end, they come back in in parallel motion. And then what's happening in the lower strings is that they are parallel triads spread out into a tenth. There's a couple of them, like right here, that's just G, D, and G. So there's no open B in there, but I do have the B up here in the melody. So that's covered. Now, um, this bottom bit here is Iceni brass, and I've just got that in there just to fill it out a little bit. So maybe what I'll do for the first time through is I will mute the Iceni, and then we'll just listen to the strings. Again, really full. Let's lose those bottom notes and let's just listen to the violin one and violin two. Really beautiful sounding. Let's take a listen now to the bottom three pitches, and I got rid of the notation. Here we go.
So that's, like I said, parallel triads. But the thing that's really cool about this from my perspective is that I'm sort of harmonizing the viola melody there. Right, and let's put that together with the top two string parts. And then we get a nice three part Right, you can hear all three voices going there. It's really, I love writing like that. I don't get a chance to do that often enough. So that's what that sounds like. Now, I've used the same mic position as legato in the first example. Let's move forward. And what I'd like to say, I'm going to skip that Iceni for now. Uh, and what I'm going to do is move forward to the next example. Now, when you think about legato, right, and a passionate legato, you think about sweeping lines with large interval jumps and, you know, really just very emotional, romantic stuff. So I came up with a line that I think fulfills some of that. And what we'll also do with this is we'll take a look at how the portamento has been engaged in this particular library, such as it is. So let's take a listen to this line in the violin. And before I do that, let's take a look at the room I've set up. So with this one, I'm only using mix two. And mix two is a large cinematic mix that allows the hall to really speak out. That's what it says down in the information panel. And there is some of the St. Luke's convolution in there. So let's take a listen to this line that I've put together. Actually, let's change this and make that up a note. So I think this sounds really good. And you can see that I just did this because I'm using my controller now. Let's take a listen to this little section here. Right? There's that thing that Paul was talking about where on the high, so it's G, D, A, E string, anything higher than an interval of a fifth that can be played on the E string of the violin, you can get that portamento. And you have to do that, from what I understand, by having the velocity all the way up and having the mod wheel all the way up. And I think that sounds pretty good, you know? Um, yeah. So let's mo keep moving ahead. And now we've got just the second violin. Let's solo that and doing the same thing. And you'll hear the timbral difference between the first and second violin. And you can also hear that it's a little bit more in the center of the stereo field. All right, you can definitely hear that it's darker. And you heard the portamento here. And let's actually get that all up a half step. I kind of like that better. And now we'll have violin one and violin two in octaves, which is a standard, passionate, romantic, orchestral, orchestrational technique. Let's take a listen.
Great. Now, moving forward, we've got the viola doing the same thing. And, you know, viola is kind of a cumbersome instrument, you know? So there is no portamento on the viola from what I understand. But it still sounds good. I still haven't uh, fixed all of those. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next bit, which is these red guys. And this is the cello. Let me just, yeah, okay, I've got the half step here at the end. So with the cello, you've got the C, the, C, the G, the D, and the A string, right? So on the A string, anything that can be played on the A string, that two notes where the second note is a fifth above that first note, and you've got the velocity at 127 and the mod wheel all the way up, you should get that portamento as long as the interval is larger than a fifth. Okay, so let's, again, that's right here. So let's take a listen. Okay, so it didn't happen. Why? Because this is not high enough pitch-wise. Let's go here where I've moved it up an octave and you'll hear. So you can really hear the difference in there. It's in a much more intense vocal-esque quality pitch register of the cello and that portamento on that interval leap really brings a lot of emotion and passion to the part. Let's take a listen to this bit here with the viola, right? Here we go, right here in octaves. So right in this area here, if there's no portamento in there, that big, maybe something like that, right? It gets to be a little bit too dramatic. So maybe you would tame that down a little bit. Yeah, it's still too much. It's still too much, the dynamic difference. So you'd have to play around with that there. But otherwise, I think that sounds really good. Now, let's move ahead to this area here. Let's see. And here we've got the bass solo right here. Let's zoom in on that and solo that. So some of these high notes, they just sound so great. I mean, they're so beautifully played and captured, right? Bass is a little bit cumbersome to be doing some of these lines, the faster lines, but it, it works just not as slickly as, say, the violin, which is a much more agile instrument. So now right here, we've got one, two, three, three octaves, right?
really, really great. You know, Tchaikovsky does those kinds of orchestrations where he's got strings in three octaves. Yes, for sure. And now up here, let's take a look at these. It's a little lighter, right? Okay, and that's a contextual look at the Spitfire audio, Appassionata strings, sustained and legato articulations. I think this library is very useful. The sound is really rich, thick, passionate playing. It's great for divisi articulations. It's great for legato. I love the portamento on the high strings of the cello and the violin. Really sounds authentic. While this library does not have the evolving textures of Spitfire Evo libraries. I think that as you go through the different dynamic levels using the mod wheel, you can really hear a timbral change much more emphatically than you can on some of the other Spitfire libraries. And you can also hear a change in intensity of vibrato as well. So if you do some work with mod wheel and tempo, like I showed in the first piece, you can get some atmospheric sounding pieces from this. It's great for Divisi, the legato is fantastic, and I particularly like the portamento on the high strings of the violins and the cello. Again, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. I've been Pete Calandra. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.